Hello YouTube, this is part two of the video series on making a uh, extruder for a 3D printer driven by a DC motor, a servoed DC motor, rather than a stepper motor. Now in the last video I uh, outlined my attempts to add a rotary encoder to one of these uh, motor gearbox assemblies, which I have now done. Uh, it's working a lot better than the previous attempt did. It's glued in so it's, it's quite solid. So in this video I'm going to outline some of the problems I've had with this and how I have solved them, or failed to solve them as the case may be. So the first problem I ran into after getting the encoder to work properly was that was that these gearboxes have really quite a lot of inertia. If I, let me just uh, refocus on the gearbox here. Um, so the gears in them, as you can see, are quite solid, thick lumps of brass. And uh, yeah, once they're spinning, they, they, they have quite a lot of inertia, which is a problem when you're trying to build a PID loop, because uh, you have to uh, mathematically account for that inertia, and, and the tendency is for it to oscillate. And that's exactly what happened uh, when I first built it. It oscillated like crazy, and no amount of PID loop tuning would, would resolve that. The second problem I ran into, again with these gearboxes, is that the, the ratio is, is actually too low. Uh, I don't know exactly what the ratio is, but it's, it's not enough. So the speed of rotation that you need to, uh, uh, for an extruder is sufficiently slow that the motor that's driving the gearbox is running very, very close to its stall speed. And that's also a problem for the for the PID loop because the, it, it, the output isn't linear with the power that you put into the motor. So that again encourages this, this crazy oscillation behavior. Um, I did wonder if this problem might go away if I put a load on it. Um, if I put a load on the, the motor si similar to what they will be in an extruder. So I, uh, I built this assembly here. That's just a coupler. This is another motor gearbox assembly is purely there for the load and if I want to increase the load I can just put a resistor across the motor and it'll it'll offer some uh, some kind of magnetic braking. Um, that didn't work either, it's still oscillated all over the place. So the solution, um, or one of the solutions I, I came up with was instead of uh, using the PID loop to, to, to servo control the absolute position, the absolute rotational position of of the, the motor, I'd use it to control the velocity. So what have we got here? Well we've got uh, the motor H-bridge driver circuit here um, that is, a, I forget what it is actually, that is a L6203 H-bridge driver L6203 H-bridge driver uh, we've got the uh, original motor gearbox with an added rotary encoder that uh, I've pretty much perfected now actually. Uh, it can still do with a, uh, a case to hold the um, photodiode and LED in place but it, it works well enough for now. Um, a straightforward mechanical coupler here and another gearbox motor assembly purely as a load. Um, if I want more load I can, I can add a resistor across the, the motor terminals here and it'll add some some braking. Um, here we have the Arduino and the FTDI interface, USB interface card. Um, and this was my attempt to make a uh, frequency to voltage converter circuit to measure the velocity of the motor. Um, it didn't work out very well. The problem with frequency to voltage circuits is that they can be quite slow responding to a change in frequency, especially if you're going from, from DC to a, a few tens of kilohertz. Um, the output voltage kind of slowly ramps up, and that's not really much good for a servo system, especially one in a, a 3D printer where you need it to actually start and stop. Pretty much the instant the signal comes in to start or stop, where you're going to end up with defects in the print. So what have I done about these problems? Well, I've cheated. So I got a straightforward servo controller from eBay. Um, it's a Chinese one. I got I got lucky. Someone was selling it cheap, so I paid about twenty quid for it, uh, which wasn't bad. Um, let's give you a brief look inside. 
Now there's some software that this company make uh, that allows you to tune the PID loop automatically which is really quite handy. And you interface to it over a serial connection there. Just zoom in on this and show you. Now, kind of amusingly, they've gone to the effort of scrubbing off all the numbers on all the chips. Um, I could work it out if I had to, I can't really be asked. Uh, that is a DSP, so it's probably some kind of DSP microprocessor hybrid, like a DSPIC or something. Um, I think it's fairly telling that they use a DSP. Uh, it's actually quite hard to control motors accurately, which is uh, pretty much what I found in, in, in my attempts with the Arduino. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to use this as is. It is way overkill for uh, an extruder. It'll, it'll do something ridiculous like 10 amps or something, uh, which is far more than I need. But I mean, hey, I could always reuse it in a, uh, another project if something more suitable comes along. And this is the motor I got. A nice Swiss motor with a um, built-in encoder on the end and uh, what's the ratio on the gearbox? It's large. 246 to 1 gearbox. So that, that that's actually almost too much and it's going in the other direction, but it should uh, certainly be um, adequate for proof of concept. This motor is actually a bit big. It's about twice the size I need really for an extruder. Um, but again, it's what there was on eBay, so, uh, so it's what I got. Um, So yeah, I guess this is cheating a bit. I was hoping to come up with a, a proper servo drive that people would be able to use, and I had kind of achieved that with a different motor and um, optical encoder system. Um, but it was it was far too big to put on an extruder, so uh, maybe I'll continue some work on this. Um, I'm going to do plenty of other extruders. I have plans for extruders to extrude everything. Um, one of the reasons I built my 3D printer was to experiment with extruder designs, so there will certainly be more to come on the uh, Arduino DC motor servo driver. Um, just not just yet, because I actually want a working 3D printer. So, yeah, that's that. And what's the next step? The next step is to actually design the rest of the extruder. So, so here's a slab of aluminium. A, a dirty old chunk of quite thick aluminium. So yeah, I'm going to make a kind of a, a bulkhead mounting system for the motor, which is going to hold all the parts together, mill it out of this, and uh, yeah, I think that's going to be the topic for the next video. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.